and welcome to my channel Bevy with Beth. I'm Beth um, and today we're going to be talking about my top 10 um, food swap items. Um, so just before we get into that I just want to remind you that I am not a qualified dietitian or doctor um, and so these are just the foods that I have found um, a benefit in doing a swap with when it came to my PCOS. Um, but if you wanted to make any major diet changes always consult your GP before you do that. Um, that being said let's get into it. So today I am simply drinking a normal cup of tea. Um, I haven't had a lot of, of tea. I've been drinking a lot of coffee recently um, and then a lot of herbal teas. And I've just suddenly realised that I just like, I like tea. <laughs> so I've had a nice normal one. Um, and as I said in the intro, we're going to be looking at my top 10 food swaps. So this is kind of the first thing that I did after I got diagnosed and I found out that I had uh, insulin resistance as well as PCOS. I knew immediately I needed to reduce my sugar intake and instead of looking at something that was you know just a diabetic diet or whatever I wanted to look at what I could do straight up to help myself um, so I started looking at the foods that I was already eating what sugar was in those and what alternatives I could use to um, to eat instead but still have less sugar so definitely the first thing, and maybe the most obvious one, because we talk about them a lot, um, is potatoes um, and swapping normal white potatoes with sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes, a little bit like avocado, become like a very big um, modern thing to eat. Um, unfortunately, they're delicious. So um, definitely the first thing I would recommend doing is any meal that you would normally have uh, with potatoes, just as swap it in for a sweet potato. Um, they're really good because they are a little bit higher in fiber. So it means they're quite good for your digestive system. And it also means of course, that that sugar can't be digested. Um, so again, it means it's not gonna be spiking our blood sugar levels. Um, I've got actually here, I looked up what the differences really were. So with um, normal potatoes, it's actually 37 um, carbs. Um, total carbs in a potato in a normal potato and a sweet potato is only 24 um so that's a big difference when you're having a meal and you're trying to reduce the spike in your blood sugar level trying to reduce the amount of insulin that you need in your system when you're eating then that's one of those that's a really big difference so definitely the first thing you should do is swap out all your potatoes for sweet potato um, the next one was the most difficult <laughs> and that was definitely um, pasta because although doing things like eating brown pasta instead of white pasta and all that kind of stuff is, is good, um, it's not the same <laughs> and even the other kind of alternate pastas if you think of kind of like the zucchini and that kind of stuff, um, it's nothing like eating normal pasta. <laughs> Um, so for me, what I looked at after trying a couple of do, doing the zucchini noodles um, and doing um, alternate pastas, brown pasta and that kind of stuff, I just, I ended up giving up <laughs> on pasta and just not eating it. Um, but one of the things I have since learnt, which I'll also bring out in the next bit as well, is it actually comes down to how you cook things. And so because we're used to cooking the carbs, um, when we first well I, for me anyway when I first swapped over into these alternate um, items I didn't know how to cook them so they weren't as tasty so with the zucchini noodles um, I would recommend um, whatever you're cooking um, it's always best to do things that are fried so whether that's a stir fry or if you are making some kind of tomato bolognese sauce then to do it in a frying pan rather than in a pot and then when it comes to doing the noodles add them into the frying pan 
because that helps them to remain uh, to continue to be a little bit crunchy rather than turning into these horrible soggy things so i'd highly recommend doing that for starters um but for me it really came down to just not not eating pasta um but there are so many alternatives out there so you've got your zucchini and your butternut squash noodles um for me i did a lot of mushrooms if it was a dish that i was going to do pasta with i'd add mushrooms in to bulk it out instead and I just found that was the, the best thing for me. But that's my advice on the on the pasta front. Now, when it comes to rice, then for me, it has to be cauliflower rice. Um, the main problem with this is that cauliflower rice is disgusting. <laughs> it tastes awful and is very difficult to, to cook into a nice texture. Um, so it's nothing like having rice but in the same way as with the pasta where it does tend to just be like a bulking agent i have again found a way of cooking the cauliflower rice which makes it nice and that is to make the cauliflower rice flavored with what the dish should be so for example if you're doing a bolognese then where you would normally put all of your onion and your garlic and your mushrooms in with the sauce to create the flavor in the sauce keep the sauce much more simple stick to your tomatoes and your herbs and your meat and then with the cauliflower rice get that into a frying pan pan tons of butter to to really get the flavors going get the salt in there and that kind of stuff and then into that add your onions your garlic and your mushrooms so that then the cauliflower rice can take on the flavor of the um of those ingredients and then your sauce has got the flavors of the herbs and the tomatoes and, and the meat and things and then when you bring those two things together they make a complete meal where everything tastes nice and it all goes together really well. So that is my recommendation as well with the uh, with the cauliflower rice because there's just, it tastes awful. But to cook it that way, it means that it goes quite nicely and, and it works a lot. Plus butter is just amazing for anything. <laughs> um, so then the next big thing, of course, was actual sugar. So the two main things for me when it came to consuming just pure sugar was my hot drinks um, and then also confectionery. I am a baker. I love to bake. And of course, there's a lot of sugar in cake and cookies. <laughs> there just is. Um, so what I started to do, I know I mentioned this a little bit in my um, GI food video, kind of go through how to work out what foods are good. But um, for me, the two things that I picked out in order for me to carry on normally um, but have better sugars as it were was for in my coffee I put maple syrup and in my cakes I used coconut sugar instead so when it comes to the um, the coconut sugar again when we look at the glycemic index normal white sugar is 65 and coconut sugar is 35 so it is nearly half as much um, of a spike in blood sugar when uh, compared to normal sugars. So I found it more with the maple syrup, but even with the coconut sugar, it still provided the sweetness that you wanted. Um, so you didn't feel like your cakes or your cookies suddenly went savoury. It was still a very sweet substance. But again, you just don't get that blood sugar spike, you don't get that insulin response, and the whole thing is just a lot easier for your body to handle. Um, so I found that really worked. Now with the maple syrup, it isn't actually that much lower um, on the GI scale, but what I found, particularly when it came to coffee, is that I was used to having my coffee so sweet. I'm too embarrassed to tell you how much sugar I used to put in my coffees. It was a lot. Um, that the maple syrup having a flavour really helped to tone down that bitterness. So I went from having a lot of sugar to half the amount of maple syrup. So I was still able to reduce that sugar by a lot just because the flavour of the maple syrup made everything taste that much better. And I recommend using that in any hot drinks um, instead of sugar, which is good. Um, so then the other problem, so my next big problem 
so first it was the sugar that I was putting in my hot drinks was the main source of pure sugar that I was eating but the other place where I was getting most of my sugar was from fruit <clears throat> so I have always loved fruit um, I've never needed to be convinced as a child to consume any form of fruit I was addicted to oranges and things like that um, but again, when I was looking at how much sugar I was eating every day and saw how much sugar was in the fruit that I was eating, I knew I needed to make a change there. Um, so the two things that I was eating a lot at the time, I have an apple every single day. Um, and I normally make that a red apple. It'll either be a royal gala or a pink lady. And those are quite high in sugar. And it turns out that a green apple is quite a lot lower um, in sugar. Now, I know a year ago, just over a year ago, um, when I looked at this, when I was setting up my spreadsheet of recording all of the sugar that I was consuming and I simply googled how much sugar was in a red apple and how much sugar was in a green apple I got two comparisons for some reason today when I'm doing that same research it's not giving me an exact number on green apples and how much sugar's in there it would only tell me what's in red apples and that it's better in green but not an actual number but I know that it is lower in green because that is what I was looking at before but I did find that green apples also have more iron, more potassium and more protein than a red apple. So actually in general, not just about the sugar, but all the other things that they contain actually, they're just a bit of a better piece of fruit. So that was the first thing I did, I swapped my red apples for my green apples. Um, and then also the berries. So I ate a lot of um, strawberries, blueberries and raspberries um, anyway, and things like cherries and oranges and stuff and so i cut out the um the cherries and the oranges um and swapped the strawberries for more raspberries um because raspberries have a thing which i'm hoping i'm pronouncing correctly <laughs> um which is allergic acid which is a known anti-inflammatory so i already knew um again i mentioned in my uh, a supplement video um, that I take turmeric for an anti-inflammatory. Well, um, raspberries are another natural anti-inflammatory because of this acid that they contain. So by eating raspberries, I was reducing the amount of sugar um, that I was eating, but at the same time also gaining the benefits of all the other minerals, a little bit like with the green apples. Um, and it's so often the case with fruits that, you know, if you find a good one, <laughs> it's gonna be good in a lot of different ways. Um, so yeah, so the raspberries are a good one to eat instead of things like um, oranges and cherries and, and grapes. Um, if you can eat raspberries instead, then they're, they're gonna do you a lot a lot more good. Um, and then the last one, which I'd kind of been cutting out or at least cutting down on anyway, <clears throat> because I think we all know that bread, white bread is the devil. Um, <laughs> so I'd been kind of reducing that a little bit. But again, when you see how much sugar are in these things, it becomes quite apparent that it needs to be a bigger change um, than just cutting things down. I mean, I didn't really eat sandwiches um, for lunch and things. So it was more kind of the toast in the morning and a late night snack. If I was going to have something with a movie or whatever in the evenings, it would be toast with um, with something on it. So I knew I needed to change that. And so I started to research what sugar was in which brands of bread. So obviously brown bread has less sugar in it um, and is generally better for you, it tends to be whole, whole grain, which is always, as we already know, good anyway. Um, but then I started to see that there were some brands of bread that would have five grams of sugar per slice and some brands that would have one gram of sugar per slice. Now that is a very big difference. Um, and depending on what you want to put in it, you know, as long as you're topping it up with butter and things, other things and salts, you know, salty meats and things that again, bring out that flavor. You don't need the sugar. Why are you putting five grams of sugar in one slice of bread? It's just, it's really not necessary. Um, so it, again, for, you know, we've all got it um, laid out on our packaging, which is super helpful because it does mean you don't have to, you know, deep dive into the web to try and find out where the good brands are. It's literally on the packaging and we just don't look in, until you have to really consider it, until you become diabetic or you have PCOS, then you're not gonna look at those ingredients in a loaf of bread because we've been eating bread for years. So we don't realize what they've been doing to it really. Um, and of course you can look at the label and do that. But I found um, when I moved out of mum and dad's and I had my own place, I stole their bread maker. So now I can actually make my own bread and I don't 
grind the flour myself to put it. I'm not quite that homely. Um, but I do have um, packets, pre-made packets of um, bread mix. And again, I could find one that had one gram of sugar in the entire mix. So we're having a slice of bread and I'm not really getting any sugar from that. So it is definitely worth just having a look at some packaging. If you can do something like buy, if you have a bread maker or you want to buy a bread maker and start making your own so you can really start controlling that um, that sugar in that thing, then, you know, you're only going to benefit from that for sure. Um, and so then um, the last thing actually is getting rid of sunflower oil, um, particularly for PCOS. Um, we have so much information in our body anyway from the mix up of hormones that anything that that encourages inflammation in our body is just going to be so much worse for us and sunflower oil is pretty terrible um it's again one of those things that it was promoted as a healthy option because it was a vegetable oil and not an animal fat oil um but honestly it, it's not good for us and i I can't believe the difference it made when I finally um, stopped cooking with it. I started using butter because I also wanted to increase um, the salt that I was eating because I was eating less carbs. Um, I was naturally eating less salt. And so then, you know, getting cramps and things. So I knew that I needed to increase my salt. So cooking in butter is a pretty easy way to do that. Um, so I started doing that. And, and the other thing that I found is not only did I feel so much better, did I start to lose um, a little bit of water retention? I mean, it's nothing major. It's not like going on a diet and you lose a ton of weight. It isn't like that. It is very subtle changes, but I'm sure you must be the same as me in that when you have that chronic illness and you're feeling pretty terrible most of the time, if something makes you feel a little bit better, then, you know, some people may not even notice it. But for us, that makes quite a big difference. Um, and I really noticed that and how I felt. But also everything tasted so much better, so much better by cooking with butter. Um, and I mean, if you don't want to cook with butter, then there are other um, oils and fats that you could cook with instead. Um, particularly, you know, if you want to be vegan, then, you know, obviously butter you're not going to use. But do not use margarine. Margarine is just as bad as, as sunflower oil. Um, so definitely either go with pure butter or find a vegan alternative. Um, and But get rid of that sunflower oil. It definitely makes a difference. So those are my top 10 um, swaps for... Um, all foods that would benefit you either removing them or um, cutting them down or definitely swapping them. That's definitely what I advise you to do. Um, I noticed a big difference when I started doing this thing almost immediately. Um, I mean, like I said, it wasn't like going on a diet and I lost a load of weight, um, but I did certainly get a lot of my energy back. So <clears throat> I hope some of those things have helped you. Um, let me know if you've done any, um, swaps yourself if you found an alternative to something um particularly if you have other dietary requirements like um lactose intolerance or you know you're already gluten free and you you needed to find some more things to help you out um then let me know in the comments down below um what it is that you have found so that we can help each other out with this um if on the other hand you decide to try something and you find that there's a benefit again let me know about it because i'd love to know if my information is helping you out um, now I'm going to go into, particularly with the inflammation, a little bit more into detail of, you know, how how that works um, and why it affects us and what we can do to reduce that in another video. So also hit subscribe so that you don't miss any of my little hints and tips and I'll see you in the next one.